I've always had a lot of respect for inventors. It must be so cool to just be able to make stuff. Periodic table. Right here. There have been some awesome inventions over the years, which have now become part of our daily lives. Not all inventions have come from a stroke of genius. Some were totally mistakes. In today's video, we're talking about 10 everyday inventions created by accident. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to The Supreme, and click the notification bell for more lit content. Let's get rolling. Coca-Cola. Who here loves a cool glass of Coke? Most of us, right? Did you know that Coca-Cola was originally invented as a medicine? American chemist John Pemberton from Atlanta, Georgia had originally concocted a medicinal syrup called Pemberton's French Wine Coca. The liquid was intended as a headache cure and was made using wine and coca extract. When prohibition came around, he was forced to shake up the makeup. Pemberton was trying to create something with a coca and cola syrup, but the mix seemed unpalatable. Pemberton was noodling over his base when a drugstore clerk accidentally mixed the medicine with carbonated soda. The result? Coca-Cola was born. Or so the story goes. The website Snopes says that Pemberton fully intended to create the mixture with soda water and had his employees take the mixture to Willis Venable's soda fountain three blocks down. It's a good story though. Non-stick. All hail the non-stick pan. You know you're getting old when you say things like, all oh, hell, the non-stick pan. Seriously though, they are a pretty good invention. You don't want to be scrubbing food off the bottom of a pan after you eat, do you? Teflon was an accidental discovery and a slow burner on the market. But once its true usefulness was discovered, people were all over it. The story starts in a New Jersey laboratory and is very sciencey, so I'll try to simplify it for you. Roy Plunkett noticed a seemingly empty can of tetrafluoroethylene weighed as much as if it were full. He cut it open to see that the gas had reacted with the iron from the canister's shell and had formed a waxy substance that seemed to repel water. From that, the substance was commercially produced, but it was only when the wife of an engineer who had helped create the material asked if her husband could coat her pans in the stuff that Teflon really took off. In 1951, Plunkett was awarded a Philadelphia Scott Medal for his invention. Gum. A lot of people probably wish that chewing gum had never been invented, but it was, and it was all an accident. Historians will tell you that the act of leisurely chewing a substance has been around since the ancient Greek civilizations, and that is true. Although chewing gum, as we know it today, was developed in the late 1800s by American inventor Thomas Adams Sr. The inventor and businessman was trying to turn chicle, which is what gum is made from, into rubber, but wasn't finding any success. He had wanted chicle, which is a rubbery milk sap from sapodilla trees, to be a cheaper alternative to rubber products, and he tried making shoes and toys from the substance, and it always failed. As he was wallowing in his failure, he remembered locals who lived near Sapodilla trees who would chew on the chicle. He started chewing on it as he mulled over what he had done wrong, and he found that he kind of liked the chewy substance. This gave him a brand new idea. He added a licorice flavor to make it taste better, and then chewing gum was born. Slinky. It kind of makes sense that a slinky was created by accident, because when you really stop to think about it, a kid playing with a big coil is kind of strange. It all came to be in 1943 when mechanical engineer Richard James was working on a Navy project. He dropped a coiled wire he was working with and watched it as it tumbled end over end. Instead of feeling frustrated at his butterfingers, James watched the coil with amusement and realized it would be a great toy. And weird as it was, he did it. Everyone loves a slinky after all. Side note, it was actually James's wife who was behind the commercial success of the toy. Richard left her to join the cult. 
but that's a whole nother story. Popsicle Iced desserts are thought to date back to the ancient Egyptian times. Cleopatra reportedly sent slaves to get snow from nearby mountains so she could serve Mark Anthony a slushie. With that in mind, I'm surprised it took us so long to invent popsicles. In the end, the genius who thought up frozen flavored water on a stick was actually an 11-year-old boy. In 1905, Frank Epperson from Oakland, California was mixing powdered soda into a glass of water with a wooden stir stick. The story goes that he was called into dinner and forgot about his drink. That night, the temperatures dropped way below what's normal in California and the mixture froze. The next day, Frank went outside and found his powdered pop mix totally frozen, but with the stick jutting out, making it a portable snack. He licked his icy treat and it gave him an idea. He named the treat an Epsicle after his last name and started selling them at Neptune Beach. Later, he rebranded them to Popsicle and filed a patent. Potato chips. Okay, this video is officially making me hungry. Potato chips were invented by mistake in 1835 by Chef George Crumb. Crumb was working at the Moon Lake Lodge Resort in Saratoga Springs, New York. French fries were as popular then as they are today and one diner ordered a portion. Although when they arrived, he was dissatisfied. The diner said that the fries were too thick, so he sent them back to the kitchen. Chef Crumb made a thinner batch but they still weren't to the customer's liking. He kept slicing potatoes thinner and thinner, frying them up with oil and salt. In the end, they couldn't even be eaten with a fork, but it turned out that the customer loved them and praised them highly. In the end, they were so popular that they were added to the menu as Saratoga chips, and people would come for miles to try the potato crunches, AKA the first ever potato chips. Safety glass. These days, safety glass is mandatory in car windshields, but it was, you guessed it, totally invented by mistake. French scientist Edouard Benedictus was climbing a ladder in a laboratory when he accidentally knocked a glass beaker off a shelf. The glass shattered, but the beaker kept its form. The shards of glass still held together rather than spread across the lab floor where they could injure him. He realized this was because the beaker had contained cellulose nitrate, which had coated the beaker. After reading an article about the danger of car accidents because of the windshield glass, Benedictus had an idea to make windshields safer. He coated glass in the chemical that stopped it shattering, and six years later, he patented lamented safety glass. Thanks to him, less people were badly injured by glass in car accidents. Sweetener. In 1879, lab researcher Constantine Fahlberg, who worked at Johns Hopkins University, spilled a chemical called saccharin on his hands. Later, he sat down to eat lunch and noticed that his bread tasted really sweet. He later published his discovery and got a patent for saccharin as a sweetener in 1884. At first, people weren't too keen to try it. Sugar was already popular, and people didn't exactly care about calories back then. It became really popular during wartime, though, as actual sugar was rationed. When the world did start caring about calories and started dieting, the low-calorie alternative to sugar was brought up by diet food and beverage companies. Two things, really. One, the dude worked in a lab and wasn't wearing protective clothing. That could have ended badly. And two, the dude worked in a lab, spilled chemicals on his hands, and then didn't wash them before eating his lunch. What was he thinking? <laughs> champagne. Bubbles are always used for celebrations, and champagne was the originally decadent bubbly wine that people would pop up for a toast. Did you know that the world's most bougie drink was actually a total accident? The first champagne batch came as a result of bad wine making. If wine isn't stored at the right temperature, the fermentation process can produce an excess of carbon dioxide bubbles. This happened to a batch of French wine in the 1400s, although when the winemakers tried it, they kinda liked the taste. The problem was that the bottles would periodically explode in the cellar, 
making them risky. By the end of the 17th century, a monk called Dom Perignon was tasked with fine-tuning the bubbly so that it tasted great and that the bottles would no longer explode. These days, a glass of champagne is said to contain one million bubbles. If the name of the monk sounds familiar, it's because he, kind of ironically, ended up becoming the father of champagne as we know it, with the brand Dom Perignon named after him. Penicillin. This is one of the most important inventions ever made in medicine, and it happened by accident. Penicillin is a powerful antibiotic that has saved millions of lives. It was invented in 1928 by Alexander Fleming at St. Mary's Hospital in London. Fleming noticed that a petri dish had accidentally been left open and had become contaminated with mold. Interestingly, he observed that the mold seemed to destroy all bacteria in its radius. Fleming concluded that the mold released a substance that repressed the growth of bacteria and even worked to break it down. From then, he created penicillin, the world's first true antibiotic. That was 10 everyday inventions created by accident. What did you think of the list? And what's your favorite invention from the bunch? Let us know in the comments. I've got to say, I could really go for a popsicle right about now. So I might just do that, thanks to the 11-year-old that made the popsicle possible. It really shows that anything is possible and that accidents aren't always a bad thing. Sometimes they're opportunities.